Welcome back. That was a highly thought-provoking panel. We have three in a row here, so excited about that. Uh, we're going to be having two panels and then a break, uh, but please stay tuned for the rest of the day that we also have a mixer and networking sessions starting later in the day. Let me also take a moment, I hate to take people's time out of this, but a moment just to let you know that a lot of this work is, by the help of our sponsors, to be able to create a free event for you all. We have two research sponsors, one of them is quite pertinent for the conversation we're about to have, that the Music and Entertainment Industry Educators Association brings us some of the fabulous folks on the next panel. They're one of our research sponsors for Mia, and then the UCLA Herb Alpert School of Music pays a little bit of my paycheck, but they also help support the research of this. So I'm glad to bring you this next great panel. This is session 25, Rethinking Music Jobs. And Armin, Sh I'm already going to mess it up. <laughs> show me in. Show me the Armin. Armin, show us the panel. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Gigi and, and the gang at Amplify. It's been amazing so far. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you, depending on what time zone you're joining us from. My name is Armin Shaomian, and I'm an Associate Professor of Entertainment Management at the University of South Carolina. I'm also currently serving as President of MIA, which is the Music and Entertainment Industry Educators Association, and we are a proud partner of this Amplify Music Conference. I'm very excited to be joined by three incredible movers and shakers in our industry today, um, and I'm just going to start off uh, the way I see it on my screen. First off is Miss Nancy Tarr. She is Executive Director of the Well Done Foundation based in New York State. Uh, and then we have Emily White. Uh, she's partner at Collective Entertainment and author and host of the podcast titled How to Build a Sustainable Music Career and Collect All Revenue Streams. And last but certainly not least, we have Ms. Tamar Koperlian, and she is the founder and CEO of the Navak uh, Collective and the Navak Foundation based in New York. So thank you all for being on this panel today. I'd like to start off with a question now that we're a year into this pandemic and things are slowly and cautiously looking more optimistic. Will music industry careers and jobs look the same as before? Any thoughts on that? I mean, I, I can start. I mean, definitely not um, because everyone is you know, working from home and more comfortable with kind of a hybrid model. Obviously, um, the live industry has been um, horribly shut down for so long. Um, at the same time, there's been a lot of investment and opportunity in webcasts. Um, but yeah, I, I think um, one of the biggest shifts is remote learning. I just had a colleague reach out to me about a job opening um, to share with interns and things like that. And it, they're based in New York, um, but it said totally open to remote. And I don't think that would have been the case prior, prior to the pandemic. So I do think in some ways it's um, opened up a lot of opportunities where you don't necessarily have to live in expensive cities like New York and LA and, and places like that. So I, I think um, even though it's been uh, such a difficult year for so many reasons, um, there are a lot of evolving and interesting opportunities. Mm -hmm. Nancy, I know you work a lot with placing students. I know the Well Done Foundation does a lot with internships and such. Can you tell me a little bit about any changes you've seen as to, you know, what might careers look like in the future and what you're hearing from other organizations? Well, I, there are a lot of virtual opportunities. I think that we're transitioning into this hybrid model that we're about to enter. So I see that there are jobs available. So I have an internship available right now where it is remote, but they want the person in the same city so that they can meet if they can and they wanna be ready for the employee to move into the office. I have another uh, job that I know of that's in Los Angeles and it's okay if it's remote right now, mm -hmm. but they're gonna all go back to the office in September. A lot of companies got rid of their offices. And I think too, that they're trying to figure out, are they going to have a physical presence in that same city that they did before? So I think that there's a lot of excitement and enthusiasm for going back to the industry but we're in this place of confusion too of what really does that mean? Even the live events industry is, you know, there are dates on the calendar, but who's putting those together right now? Are they going to go? So it's just, you know, we have to be patient and, and see sort of what's next. You know, the Bonnaroo Music Festival is on the calendar 
for Labor Day weekend, it's sold out. And we usually have, um, they have an extern program there and a very large volunteer program, but we don't know what that is yet. So, you know, are we going, we're not going back to what it was before, but it's definitely going to be a hybrid model. And people have to be patient and just realize things are going to be different for everyone. Mm-hmm. Now, Tamar, I know you, uh, you work, uh, the foundation that you have, the Navak Collective and the Navak Foundation, you do some incredible work with young uh, artistic, talented students in not only in Armenia where it's based, but also I've seen in Israel and in Malawi. Can you tell us a little bit about, and you bring these groups together, there's mentorships, there's experts, there's education. Um, can you tell us briefly a little bit about that? And also during this pandemic, have you been able to continue some of that digitally or are things that on hold or how is that going? Yeah, I, I also want to just touch on what Nancy said, too. I think yeah. that this idea of things kind of being up in the air and there is a level of uncertainty as to how things are going to how the dust is going to settle. Um, however, I think for businesses like mine, where our work always was mm-hmm. global and and remote, it is we we have we've had this essentially like an entirely new lane of opportunities available to us and to, you know, the women and non-binary creatives that we hire in these uh, markets that we're working in. Like you mentioned, um, Armenia, um, we also work in Lebanon and Israel and in Malawi. And um, the aim really is to be able to kind of expand our work and have um, a larger, uh, more global footprint in other places um, in the MENA region Mm -hmm. as well um Mm -hmm. but no i interestingly COVID has actually allowed us to make a greater impact in these places so we have all kind of pivoted fully to digital in the last you know this past year we've all gone from office to online within days especially those of us in the in the higher ed sector where institutions sometimes can be kind of slow to adapt to an ever-changing industry which is the music industry and all of you are involved in some way with mentoring or in music industry education be it mentoring or assisting students with career placements what do you guys think that music and music industry college programs and continuing education will change where do you think the music industry jobs might be in the future who wants to take a crack at that <laughs> That's a really good question. And I think that right now, I think that live streaming jobs are what is available and really understanding the back end and pre-production and how do you how do you create a live stream and are you pre-recording to upload? So um, Tamara, you just made me think too, you know, our well done really pivoted through this COVID year. We offered a mentorship program, which we'd never done before, and we reached many more people in many areas and connected people because we could. So I definitely think that that's going to be something that we've got moving forward. And at the same time, with those connections, it just created that much more of a desire to meet in person too. Um, I think that technology skills are always good to adapt. I think that music industry programs um, are somewhat good at giving those skills to students. Audio still is even more important, I think than ever. Data analytics is always important. You know, streaming, gathering the numbers, visualizing that data. Yeah. Emily, any any comments on that? Yeah. I mean, I think music education and uh, music business programs have to be at the forefront because our industry is always evolving. So Mm -hmm. obviously what happened over the last year is traumatic and super intense from the get-go. But, you know, you've heard me say, um, I was speaking in Scott Laguerre's class and he said, this is um, Napster for the live industry, right? So mm-hmm. we've been through yeah. this before with a shift to digital. I had, um, I've been guest lecturing at Appalachian State and I had a student ask me like, well, what happens as a manager when you make all these plans and then there's a pandemic? I'm like, well, you just have to figure it out. Yeah. And you guys know we, uh, at our um, I Voted initiative, we were in venues for the 2018 election, but then we pivoted to produce the largest digital webcast uh, or sorry, the largest digital concert in history yeah. on election night. And it actually just completely um, brought in our reach. Uh, we had over 450 artists that wouldn't have happened um, if we were in person. And also we were able to engage tons of all of your students. We had over 200 volunteers um, and I was really um, happy to be able to give them that opportunity because so many internships were canceled and, and these kids are so passionate about the live industry. So 
that's what entrepreneurship is. You know, things are going to change. Technology evolves. Pandemics happen. And you have to evolve, pivot, figure it out and do what's best for the artists and the industry. I will say as a, as a professor who teaches this in, in a, you know, major university in the South, we don't always have access to music industry folks locally, but that has been definitely one of the positives that Emily you're talking about is that we've had access to folks like yourself and others that are, Hey, I have time. I'll call in from LA or New York or Nashville or what, what have you. And it's been a great way for the students to um, connect with those folks as well. Um, Tamar, I'm going to bring it to you. Have you been able to continue with your foundation some of this as well, or, or has it mostly been locally based because you have those programs already set up? Or have you had folks call in, you know, from the States or other countries, um, you know, when it comes to mentorships and such? We, um, around March of last year, I had this moment where I realized that if we didn't shift to remote learning, that all of these communities that we had been super serving Mm -hmm. for a few years would have absolutely access to nothing. So um, it's interesting that we're talking about the remote uh, learning topic, because one of the things that I realized is that music education in the United States is very expensive. (laughs) Uh, And unless you have the means and the resources to be able to access that education, you know, if you're a a young creative in Malawi, you, you can't, you just physically, you just don't have access to that. Um, so I partnered, um, with a close friend of mine, her name's Ali Tamposi, a really well-known songwriter in the business. And, um, she and I started this uh, Mm e-learning, platform called song start. Um, and we recently partnered with Spotify to be able to, uh, create a free digital, um, a- education portal where we teach everything from music business to, um, to songwriting, to music production, to mental health. So mental health is the fourth component yeah. of, um, of our program. And um, we're in pre-production now. We um, are starting production uh, in the next few weeks. And we have everybody from, you know, Nisha Charles to um, Phoebe Bridgers as our teachers, which is really cool. Um, so that's going to launch in August and that's kind of our, you know, um, our, our way of trying to make music education more accessible globally to, to people that don't and wouldn't Mm -hmm. have access to it otherwise. It's very interesting that you're mentioning mental health, because that's certainly something that, you know, more and more conferences that I've attended certainly is, is becoming a larger topic. And, and, and it's finally becoming a topic in our industry officially and openly, but it's more mm-hmm. about industry folks. So the fact that you're, you're you know, using that as a major topic for students early on, that's, that's a, inter- can you tell me a little, just a little bit, you know, what, what that entails or are you talking to the, what are the ages of, of some of these students that are in your program? The ages range from about 15 to maybe mm-hmm. 30. Okay. Um, hmm. You know, I think mental health yeah. is really important in, you know, regardless of where you live, but when you're in regions like Armenia, for example, where Mm -hmm. mental health is not a topic that is discussed Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. at home or, or anywhere else. um, I think being able to give um, young people the support that they need and a a safe space to be able to talk about things that they are going through um, and allowing them to channel those things into, into music and essentially using music as a form of therapy. um, I, it's, it's, it's important. Yeah. And, um, Sorry, yeah. Just you, go ahead. Yeah. This conference is a great example, right? Yeah. Like think yeah. of how expensive in-person music business conferences are Absolutely. now amplify is free, you know, and you have access to speakers all over the world. So, um, that's another opportunity that's really opened up. And I, because we are more comfortable with webcasting and things like that, I hope that conferences do that. So people who can't afford to get to South by Southwest or whatever can still get the information. And I'm just going to plug the organization that I'm running as an educator, the MIA Summit, M-E-I-E-A Summit.org. We have ours uh, coming up as well, where Amplify is a partner in about a month. So feel free to check out the website. And we're also one of the um, uh, sponsor booths uh, online virtually. So how about, uh, are there any tips or ideas as to additional knowledge that those that are newly entering into this industry of workforce may need to stay competitive? I mean, Emily, to your point, there's, there's a plethora of conferences and, and all of a sudden just so much information online. It's easy to network. It's easy to find folks. Um, are there additional ideas that you would have for maybe those that are watching now that are either students or trying to enter the workforce after this or during this pandemic where, 
you know, to try to stay competitive? Yeah. I mean, a lot of it is, is really similar to before, right? Because Mm -hmm. as a manager and entrepreneur, like I'm, I, I used to travel all the time. I could be in Japan or whatever. So um, as you know, I have a book interning 101. A lot of those basics still apply, right? Like Mm -hmm. um, being good at writing emails, reading, you know, everything that's going on in the Slack team. Um, And again, like the entire industry is going to become hybrid. Like I feel that live shows, you know, obviously are going to return, but then we can have a sold out show and webcast it um, to that many more people. I mean, I don't know why Scott Laguerre is on my brain this morning, but (laughs) I believe his program is about three hours away from Minneapolis. So he's also told me that his students can't always get to live shows. So we can access that many more fans, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, And also we, you know, there's stay at home parents that have been able to check out shows. There's people with disabilities. So I feel like we can um, reach that many more people. So to answer your question, um, like Nancy said, Mm -hmm. um, the more technical skills you can uh, learn, um, the more audio skills you can learn. Coding is always super important. Um, But yeah, I mean, we already lived in kind of an online world. We've just shifted even more in that direction. So a lot of the same skills from um, before actually still apply now. Absolutely. And yeah, Nancy, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, you know, I've worked remotely almost all of my career. So part of it, I'm at home and then you go to the place where the thing is. So I want to address that other question you asked about skills. So skills that we want music business students to know in the program. And I think that this is also something that's important for uh, students coming up. And it really relates, it goes back to mental health too, is this mindset and sort of what Emily said, you know, this industry is constantly changing. So you you will always have to learn new skills, but you have to have this mindset of being flexible. And I, I had somebody put that in the chat too. So flexibility, resilience, uh, resourceful. And I think that what we're teaching right now is this concept of change management, that things are always going to change and that you have to go with the flow. You have, just have to be ready. But there definitely is in my classroom, certainly a, a greater emphasis on mental health, checking in, making sure everyone's okay, intentional practices too, where we listen to some music or just check in with people. So I think that that's, that's a, a nice window that's been opened in the music industry that we can address it honestly and say that we aren't okay and that we understand that and that there are some tools available to all of us. So really it's developing that mindset of flexibility. And, you know, I think about Emily too, on a, another panel that we were on together, maybe I was just listening, but, you know, innovation occurs at these pain points. There's innovation and opportunities and just, you know, certainly things have been lost, but there's so much coming also. And this is a great time to be entrepreneurial and just think differently. Well, and just Absolutely. to add to that, I can, uh, we all know a million people in the industry. I can think of one colleague that has had, been at the same company for her entire, you know, 30, 40 year career. So pandemic or not, you know, things are always shifting, always changing. You know, you have to educate yourself, but yeah, I mean, it, it starts with the ba- basics, like making great art, understanding mm-hmm. recording, understanding basic internet marketing. I mean, I, I just found out that my podcast is the number one music business podcast in America. That is free. You know what I mean? And also like I made that on the couch or whatever. <laughs> you still have all these great tools and access mm-hmm. to resources and information that we can then take in and um, apply to ourselves as artists or people who help artists. Absolutely. Um, Armin, I, I, yes. Ooh, sorry. Ahead. No, 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 no I was, I, um, I think, I think the flexibility point is a really, is a really good one that you made, Nancy. I, I would also say that you just need to hustle in this business. Mm. That is the hustler. And, and we have this phrase at Novak where we say gentle hustle, because there's also hustling that is, um, that's like, that can be overbearing at times, but you just, you know, you, you, you can go to school and you can be in school for the longest time and you can learn all the things and you can do all that stuff. So much, I think of the music business though, is also like being on the ground, being, you know, going out and meeting people, mm-hmm. you know, if there's somebody that you admire on, on who, whoever it is, it could be, it could be like a, a, a producer, find them on Instagram and hit them up, send them an email. You can find people's emails on LinkedIn. Like just, you know, go out and do it and be persistent. Like sometimes you won't hear back on the first or second try and you just have to kind of keep, 
um, you know, keep doing it. And then eventually, you know, someone will respond and then that'll kind of open your network. We yeah. have a motto yeah. too. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I'll just read their bios first, please. Don't ask how they got their start in the industry because that information is out there. Yeah. When you do get that opportunity, make sure you're asking questions that isn't information that you would have available mm -hmm. to you otherwise. Mm -hmm. Google is an amazing thing. Mm -hmm. And provide value. You know, if you're find a way to provide value to that person. So I was going to say too, I have a motto, which is similar to the gentle hustle. It's patiently persistent. So you're absolutely right. And I really think education is going to change dramatically. You have kids who have been locked inside their houses online now for a year and, and some longer. And I do think that this will stretch out a little bit longer. Those kids aren't going to want to go to college. It's going to be completely different. Some may and some may not. But Tamar, to your point, if you want to get into the music industry, make connections. And you don't necessarily need to be in a four-year degree program to gain skills either. And I think that we are seeing this shift right now with high school programs develop, developing like yours and others, where kids are mature, they're digital natives, they get it, and they're ready to go. Also, just start doing it, you know, that's right. whether you're an artist, industry person, you know, I meet students all the time, like, where is their opportunity or what can I do? I'm like, ask any right artist, here. they all <laughs> need help. One of the things I tell my students, absolutely, <clears throat> to everyone's point here, you got to do a little bit of research. Everybody runs to the large five companies and applies to these internships where they might get 20, 30,000 of them, you know, and it's very impersonal. I say, just find the local publisher or a small mm -hmm. label. And, and, you know, one of the things I was very lucky is to have Michael Goldstone, known as Goldie from Mom and Pop Records, join my class the whole semester and mentored five or six of my students every other Tuesday this entire semester. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's one-on-one -on, -one on Zoom with five students about an hour and a half every other week. And that was an incredible experience that these students could have never had um, anywhere else. But thanks to, again, the pandemic, you have some folks that are like, you know what, I have a little bit of time. How can I reach out and do something outside of the city I'm in. Um, Tamar, I just wanted to bring it back to you uh, really quickly since it's, you know, your organization really touches on, on folks from, you know, 15 up to 30 or so. Um, are you doing a lot of international collaboration or are they kind of locally based or have you done more now that, you know, COVID has kind of brought onto this digital world of, of meetings all over? Yeah, that's a great question, Armin. We, um, we do a little bit of both. So okay. we want to make sure that um, we're doing really on the communal level, on the regional mm -hmm. level, then on the global level. Uh, so I'll give you an example. Um, one of our artists, Rosa from Vanadzor, Armenia. Vanadzor yeah. is, yeah. <laughs> is, is a smaller city in yeah. uh, Armenia. And um, she's one of the most incredible songwriters, singers I've ever met in my life. And uh, she wrote this incredible song in Russian. Okay. And we recently connected her with uh, an America and Kiara is doing a feature on Rosa's song. And they just recorded a song. Kiara just cut her vocal a few days ago remotely and they were FaceTiming wow. and Rosa was teaching Kiara how to sing the chorus in Russian. And it was just such a cool moment. And it, honestly, this wouldn't have been available to us a year ago. And then Rosa's doing sessions with yeah. Ali Tamposi and Jenna Andrews yeah. and like all of these people in the business, like none of this would have been a possibility, you know, mm -hmm. pre COVID. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I also really quickly, Emily, you had, you briefly mentioned you're being very, you know, bashful, but you're interning one-on-one, not only an Amazon bestseller, but students all over have been checking out this book, which came out at such a opportune time because COVID really flipped everything upside down. And so your book was a great resource and it really is. And I tell my students um, about it. Can you tell us, Emily, just a couple highlights or for those that are not familiar, um, just giving you a quick plug here. Sure. Thank you. I mean, reminder that um, sometimes the best internships are never posted. Um, yep. I was just on someone's podcast yesterday and um, they were asking me about my background and I started interning for Amanda Palmer and the Dresden Dolls when I was in college. They played my school. I introduced myself to Amanda. I said, let me know if you ever need help with anything. She said, can you come over tomorrow? And the Cliff's Notes version of that book is make yourself indispensable. Mm -hmm. um, I would never say I was the third member of the Dresden Dolls, but certainly functioning with me was a lot easier than functioning without me. So much so that they built me into their management contract when I graduated college and I've never used my resume since. So that's the 
shortest version I can give. Great. And we just have a couple of minutes. Nancy, are you seeing now a little more opportunities now that the big companies have pivoted to allowing for more digital since so many internships were canceled last year? Are you a little more hopeful for this summer and fall as far as internships go and remotely and in person? I am definitely um, more hopeful for opportunity. And I would say, too, that one thing that has really transformed the music industry is the shift to focusing on diversity and mm -hmm. bringing in a new uh, talent pool of students that aren't represented across the industry, not just at record labels, but in live events, in touring, in retail, in products. So there's really an intentional um, action of mm -hmm. bringing in diverse students and, and finding uh, different pockets of where uh, people can put these groups together. TikTok has the Black Creators group. I know that uh, HYM has also created a, a Black Creators group um, and, and different record labels also have their own initiatives. So mm -hmm. I, I do think that this has really widened the, the talent pool, broadened that opportunity gap that had been so narrow for other college students. And just this mindset, again, I go back to that mindset too, that you know, things are different, they're going to look different, and people are more welcoming to what is different also. And that remote aspect, too, helps because it's so expensive to live in some of these major cities that a, a, an employee can be working remotely where it's more affordable for them to live. I know we have to go, but I just want to point out what Well Done does. Uh, we fund entertainment industry internships for underserved students. So if you can't afford an unpaid internship, which mm -hmm. is most people, please check out Well Done and it's D-U-N-N, -N, like, like the last name. Absolutely. And the great thing with Amplify is that everyone's socials and bios, like Emily said, always check the bios. Everything is listed. So feel free to reach out to any of us. Ladies, it's been an incredible 30 minutes. We could go on for several hours. There's just so much to cover. So I really want to thank Tamar Caprelian uh, from the Novak Foundation. I want to thank Emily White from Collective Entertainment. And I also want to thank Nancy Tarr from Well Done Foundation. Thank you so much. And we'll hope to see you soon at another event. And thank you, Armin. Great job. Um, thank you, and, sir. And, and as an educator, thanks to all of you for being such a great resource for our students. This concludes our Rethinking Music Jobs panel, and in a couple of minutes, we're going to switch to Rethinking Music Tourism. Thanks again. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, we're off.